Pacific Legal Foundation would like to know why is the California Department of Fish and Game trying to shut down California's recreational fishing industry? They're going to require, for instance, uh, quarterly inspections. And these inspections would be conducted by who? They haven't even determined yet how it would be done. All they've said is the Department of Fish and Game will not do it. The private fish farm will not do it. You'll have to hire a consulting company to come in and do inspections. They're going to be doing surveys for invasive species, surveys for disease. Uh, the disease lab, where it's going to take place. Where will it take place? There's only one disease lab that's been identified in the United States that is even willing to do it. And believe me, they would get inundated with the amount of samples that are being proposed, and they wouldn't be able to take care of the entire needs of the state of California. So that's just an example of how unworkable their, their current proposals are. The Department of Fish and Game's proposed new environmental regulations will not only apply to fish stocking businesses like Ken Beers, but to every public and private pond or lake in California that stocks fish. Hi, I'm Doug Elliott, and uh, I'm the operator of recreational fishing lakes in the Southern California area, specifically Orange County, and we've been operating these lakes for, gosh, over 30 years. Well, now there's some problems. The uh, Department of Fish and Game has created a bunch of new proposed regulations which literally can literally do away with recreational freshwater fishing in the state of California. Now, these proposed regulations that the department is asking that the commission adopt for the fish stocking and for, for testing for, for hatcheries and fish farms, supposedly they're being motivated by environmental concerns. What do you think of the truth of that assertion, that, that we need more regulations to protect the consumer or to protect the environment from businesses like yours? Aquaculturists already uh, operate under quite stringent regulations here in California. You have to be registered with Fish and Game initially. Your sites have to be inspected. There are disease regulations that uh, we already uh, operate under. And essentially, we've been doing it, as I said, I've been doing it now for over 35 years. And to the best of my knowledge, there's never been an issue associated with, certainly with any fish stocking that we've conducted. And for that matter, I can't think of a single instance of uh, any issue that's ever been brought to my attention in the entire 35 years of uh, private fish stocking. One of the things that they've come up with is they, they want to have every pond, lake, stream, and so forth certified by a certified biologist to actually come out and conduct an environmental study to determine whether or not the stocking of fish will have an impact, a negative impact, on native species. Some lakes will not be able to afford the thousands and thousands of dollars it will require to do this environmental impact study. What would you estimate would be the economic impact on your business if the entire proposal of regulations were adopted? Well, we're fortunate in terms of the fish stocking regulations. As I said, it's a relatively small part of our business. There's a number of other companies, for instance, the trout industry, that virtually 100% of the trout that are grown in the state are for recreation stocking, and virtually none are grown specifically for food. There are other warm water fish growers that specifically target fish stocking. For them, uh, these regulations will probably result in them going out of business. Pacific Legal Foundation is representing the California Association for Recreational Fishing in challenging these new regulations. But the impact of the regulations goes far beyond those involved in the recreational fishing industry. Obviously, you know, if you're not a fisherman, you may say, oh, this, this won't affect me so much. The initial stage will affect anyone who likes to stock fish, anyone who might have grandkids whose first fishing experience is probably going to be catching a little bluegill in someone's private pond. Those are, that's what's going to be affected initially. Two or three years down the road, if the disease regulations take place, what's going to happen is fish farms are going to go out of business in the state of California. California is the number one state in the production of sturgeon. We basically invented it here. And caviar, I might add. Largemouth bass, number one in the state, uh, or number one in the nation. Uh, we also grow a significant amount of catfish, a significant amount of tilapia, which uh, you're starting to see in restaurants now. All of these fish are being grown in state and are sold locally in state. So you're talking about sources of local food. We, we're the biggest fish farm in the state of California. We don't deliver more than 90 miles away. All of our fish goes just to the Bay Area. So it's sold fresh quite often the same day that we deliver it. And so you're going to be seeing this, this really this great source of food 
very reliable source of food. And in a few years, it may be a thing of the past, and we'll be importing just more fish from overseas. Are California bureaucrats going to make this a thing of the past? Not if Pacific Legal Foundation can help it.